He's not been in the last few videos. People keep asking where he is. So just for you guys, here's a dog. A very tired dog as well. But today's video is regarding ISO. And does ISO actually cause noise? Yes, you've guessed it. It's a response to Tony Northrup's video. Now, the last time I did a video in response to Tony Northrup talking about ISO, I'll admit I did get a little bit ranty and the whole video kind of went a bit more viral than I was expecting. This one will be a lot calmer, I promise you. So Tony's recently put a video up claiming that ISO in a camera doesn't actually affect the noise that you see in an image. It doesn't cause the noise that you see in your image, but your shutter speed and your aperture do. Now, since Tony's put that new video up, my old video started getting a load more views and people commenting saying, you want to see the new video he's put up. And I have actually had a couple of people message me directly asking, could I do a video in response to Tony's claims because they're crap? Actually, fundamentally, what I think Tony's trying to get at, I do kind of agree with him. But I do think he stretches what he's trying to get across a little bit too much and then it then gets quite confusing. Now, ISO doesn't actually cause the noise that's in your image because the noise is already there in the file. When you're taking a picture, your sensor detects light and it creates a signal. Now, as it's processing that signal, it generates some noise and thus you get a signal to noise ratio. Now, the level of noise that your camera puts into an image is kind of consistent. It's random in how it appears, but the amount of it is fairly consistent. Now, if when you capture an exposure, you don't capture a lot of light, you end up with quite a poor signal to noise ratio because you've got a very weak signal. You also end up with a very underexposed image. So therefore you have two choices. You either up your ISO or you increase the exposure in post-production. But both of those are fundamentally the same thing. Both of them are amplifying the original signal. But with amplifying the original signal, you also amplify the noise, and therefore you get a noisier, grainier picture. The example I always use to try and explain this to people is audio. If you have an audio track that has naturally a really strong signal, you don't need your speakers at a particularly high volume to hear it. The audio sounds very clear because the signal's very good. If you have an audio track that's really quiet though, you have to turn the volume up on the speaker in order to hear it. And it does become audible, but you get a lot of crackling in the background. And what that is, is all the noise within the audio file that you can't really pick up and detect when it's a good signal becomes a lot more obvious when it's been amplified. And the noise that you see in an image is exactly the same. So yes, ISO doesn't cause the noise, but ISO is the only setting that makes the noise more apparent, which is a point in Tony's video that I do disagree with, because he said that ISO doesn't cause noise, but your shutter and your aperture do. Now, Tony did try and back up everything he was saying with sample photos, where he'd take like a correctly exposed image and an underexposed image caused by changing various settings, and try to show that you got more noise from changing your shutter or your aperture than you did from your ISO. If you speed up your shutter or you close down your aperture, it doesn't increase the noise that, that's in the image, it reduces the signal because you're reducing the amount of light. You then end up with an underexposed image that you have to amplify either with your ISO or in post, which then makes the noise more apparent. So technically, the only thing that actually produces noise in an image is your camera itself, the circuitry within the camera when the light is being captured. None of the settings that you change actually changes the amount of noise that is embedded within the file. All the settings do is change how apparent the noise becomes. But here's some sample images of my own to try and demonstrate what I'm saying here. So these were all taken with the Sony a6400. This first one was a correctly exposed image taken at ISO 100. And you can see there's pretty much no noise visible in the file. 
The second image is still at ISO 100, but I've increased the shutter and the aperture to darken the image by about five stops and then brightened it up in post. And you can see there is a lot more visible noise. That's because I've had to amplify the signal and thus amplify the noise in post. This third image, to try and highlight the point, was taken at the camera's highest available ISO of 32,000. And then I've adjusted the shutter and the aperture to get a correct exposure. And you can see the image is extremely noisy. Now that noise isn't caused by the ISO, it's caused by the camera, the internals of the camera. But there's such a poor signal to begin with that it's required a lot of amplification to get a correct exposure, which means there's a lot of amplification on the noise, which means the noise is more apparent. So the only thing that technically causes noise in your image is the internals of your camera. If they ever get a camera to have no noise on its internals, it wouldn't input any noise into your file. You could shoot at ISO a million and have completely clean images. Unfortunately, we probably won't see such a camera in our lifetime. So in summary, as I might have already mentioned here, no ISO doesn't cause the noise within an image file, but none of the settings cause the noise within an image file. The noise is already there. But ISO is the only setting within a camera that makes that noise more apparent. If you change your shutter or your aperture settings, you shift the exposure, but you don't make the noise more apparent unless you then amplify an underexposed image in post. ISO is the only setting in camera that if you change it, it makes noise more apparent within your file because you've already boosted and amplified th that signal and noise before the file has been saved. But in the real world, all of this has pretty much squat to do with actually taking photos. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. If you're unsure about all this, you are confused by all of this, my personal advice, and it is just my personal opinion this, but I prioritize shutter and aperture settings first to suit whatever I'm photographing and then adjust the ISO when necessary to get as close to a correct exposure as I can in camera. So there we are. I hope for the people who were asking that has cleared things up. As always, guys, if you have any other questions or queries, comment boxes down below while you're down there. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And as always, hopefully, I will see you in the next video.